Welcome to the Learn Podcast, where first you learn, then you drop the L, and then you earn. I'm your host, Dean, the Wealth Coach, and today is a serious topic. I've been MIA for quite some time with my podcast. I was doing it every day, and I said I was going to do it for 75 days, and I stopped doing it around day 35, to day 36, and I'll tell you the reason why. So I've been going through something for the last bit, and... I never really talked about it publicly, but now I feel like it's the perfect time to do that. My birthday is just around the corner and I felt like I need a change in my life. And if I continue doing the same things over and over again, I'm not going to see this change. And I want to come on here and just tell you guys, like I'm suffering through imposter syndrome. So you may be saying, what in the world is imposter syndrome? So I went to my trusted friend, ChatGPT, and I put it in, and this is what it said. Imposter syndrome feels like you're pretending to be good at something, even when you are actually good at it. It's like when you do something well, but inside you think, I'm just lucky, or I don't really know what I'm doing. You might worry that others will find out you're not as smart or as skilled as you think. It feels... It's a feeling that can make you doubt yourself, even though you're doing a great job. So that's what I've been struggling with. I learned something new or information that I've pretty much mastered. It's like I just have a lot of self-doubt in myself. And maybe you're going through the same thing. So today I said to myself, you know what? Make a podcast about this imposter syndrome, these things that you're going through. There's a lot of information out there. Like we're living in probably the greatest time right now. And that's because we have information at our fingertips. But it can also be something that is not the greatest because you can have information overload or what they call analysis paralysis. I just have so much information like I have books upon books upon books get this book upon books like there's so many books like if i could show you the tabs that i have open on my laptop i have this journal here i have so many things like it just doesn't stop like i'm just always writing something i'm reading something i'm watching something but no actions are being taken or when i am taking actions i don't feel confident in what i'm doing whiteboard Wednesdays I started to slack off because I was like I'm stuck I don't know what to do but something came to mind I was like I'm making it too difficult for myself and why not just take the path of least resistance and you know what path that is turning on my camera and just recording whatever comes to my mind so today I said that's what I'm going to do Originally, I said I was going to do a podcast yesterday. I didn't end up doing it. But going through this imposter syndrome, I've just been learning a lot about myself. Like one thing that I was learning is I always seek validation from other people. And when I do that, I kind of set myself up for failure in two ways. One, I don't get the answer that I'm seeking. Or two, I do get the answer I'm seeking, but I don't continue afterwards with that and that's a problem because i'm looking for other people for insight or praise on what i'm doing but then i'm not doing nothing with that praise so now what i need to do is just focus on what it is that i said i want to do that i feel inside and i said i want to be a youtuber content creator on the youtube platform so that's what i'm going to stick to doing All the other platforms will be secondary, but my first main goal is YouTube. And the reason I'm putting that out there is because you guys can hold me accountable for doing this. Another thing that was stopping me when I was listening to other people, they said, you're doing your podcast too often. Not people, people are not going to watch it. Uh, it's, It's just too much. And I was like, yeah, you're right at that time. But then I said to myself, there's other people out there that are posting three, four times a day whether it be on YouTube or on other platforms. So why am I stopping myself from doing the same? I attended a a webinar today. It got kind of boring, but sometimes you get like one, two little nuggets out of it. And this is the two nuggets I got out of it. 
there are no rules. You make your own rules. And when they said that, I was like, huh, that's pretty true. Like, there's no government telling me that I can't make five videos for a day, 5,000 videos for the year. Whatever it is that I want to do, I can do it. But when I started letting other people tell me what they think is right versus wrong or what I should and shouldn't do, then I get into like my head and then I started listening to them. And then I stopped doing what it is that I want to do. Another thing they said was craft your own work. Whatever it is that you want to do, craft your own work. Create the lifestyle that you want. Not the job, but create the lifestyle that you want. Once you understand the lifestyle that you want, you'll be able to create whatever it is that you want. That job, the amount of money that you want. Figure it out the lifestyle that you want first. Because once you understand the lifestyle, then you can tailor the job to that. For example, if you want to only make $5,000 a month, that should be that should be enough to cover your bills, your your living expense, uh transportation, all the necessities and still have some left over. Now, do you need to have a six-figure job to obtain that type of lifestyle? Probably not. But when you start focusing on the career versus the lifestyle, the career becomes your lifestyle. Like you have no time to do anything. It's just work, work, work. You got to slow down. Like we only have one life and you got to enjoy that to the fullest. So how are you going to enjoy that life if you're always working? So you need to just slow down and think about what it is that you really want in life. So that was the first thing. That, that was the one thing that I picked up from the webinar. Another thing that kind of stood out for the webinar, <clears throat> I think her name was Manuela. Manuela. I don't remember her last name, but she's a part of the Alux uh, team. Shout out to Alux. I love their videos. If you haven't subscribed to the Alux channel, I recommend you do. This is just me just plugging them. They never asked me for this. There's no affiliation. But yeah, that's the channel that I love to watch. It's where future billionaires come to get inspired. So back to the topic at hand. She brought up something, but she didn't use the term that I was thinking, but it's called the law of averages. And the law of averages continuing, it's like, you know, what, let me type this in. I, I love using chat GPT and I like doing it at a grade three level because it's easy for me to understand. So if I understand it, it should be easy for you to understand it. And I always test it with my daughter. She's in grade two. So if she understands what chat GPT is saying, you most definitely can understand. So grade three, um, what was I doing again? Oh, law of average. Sorry. Law of average. So it's going to explain what the law of average. The law of average is saying, is like saying something that's supposed to happen sometimes. It will happen about that often. Hold on. This is taking long to write. The law of average is like saying if something is supposed to happen sometimes, it will happen about that often if you wait long enough. For example, if you flip a coin, sometimes it lands on heads and sometimes on tails. The law of average says that if you that if you are flipping a coin a lot of times, it will land on heads about half the time and tails about half of the time. It's like expecting things to balance out over time. So now imagine you want to start selling a product like this. This is my product. Yes. Seamus Pug, this is my book. Financially Fit Activity Book. If I want to start selling this product, I have to reach out to people. I have to let people know I exist. Knock, knock. Who's there? Dean, the wealth coach. And I got a book for you. Are you interested in purchasing? No. Whoosh, slam the door. On to the next person. Imagine I did that once. Or not imagine, but as I just explained to you, I did that once. I got a no. I did that 10 times. I got 10 no's. I did it 100 times. I got 100 no's. I did it 101 times. Knock, knock. Who's there? Dean the Wealth Coach. I got a book for sale. It's called the Financially Fit Activity Book. And it helps people with managing their money. Are you interested in purchasing one? 
Why, yes, this is something that I did need. How much is it? Oh, it's 37 bucks. Thank you, I'll take a copy. 101. It took me 101 times to sell that book. That's the law of average. Now, let's put it, let's scale it. Let's say I reached out to 10,000 people or <clears throat> 1,000 people and I sold 10 of these books. Now, I sold 10 of these. You know what starts to happen if you keep doing something over and over again? Not in instance with like a coin. If you keep reaching out to people, one of two things is going to happen. They're going to either say yes or they're going to say no. <laughs> There's only two outcomes. But the more you get the no's, the better at your delivery becomes with getting a yes. So if you focus on just getting the no's so that you know every objection somebody will give you, guess what? You're going to get closer to a yes. So maybe you do have to reach out to 100 people to get that one yes. But if what if you found a way to accelerate speaking to multiple people? Like say you put up an ad and that ad you put up reached out to a thousand people and say of that thousand people, 10 people actually bought your book. How great would that be? And that's how the law of averages works. One of my goals for 2023, I think even 2022, I said, I want to become, I want to get a YouTube plaque. What plaque I get, I don't even care. I just want to get a YouTube plaque. It's just one of my personal goals that I want to do. It's like when you're in high school, you're on a track and field team. Your purpose of running track and field um, is to win a medal or a trophy, right? That's a trophy that I want to win. That's an accomplishment that I want to achieve. So my goal is to get the silver YouTube plaque, the gold YouTube plaque, the diamond YouTube plaque, the ruby YouTube plaque. But how do I do that? I got to play the game. And the game that I'm playing is the law of averages. So even if I have to create five videos a day, so be it. I'm going to create those five videos. If I have to create every day, so be it. I'm going to do it. Because that's the mission that I'm on. My mission is to get one of those YouTube plaques. My mission is to provide you guys value on a daily basis so that you guys can take the information that I have learned and apply it to yourself. Some people don't like to read. Now imagine I created a 10 minute video about traffic secrets. How great would that be for you? Instead of taking maybe three, four months to read that book. You wanna get your life back on track? I created a book. That's so simple for you guys to do. Like this, if you struggle to save money, look at this right here. Six week savings challenge. Your target is $2,500. Your weekly targets, literally six book, six money bags. If you set yourself up and say, all right, I'm gonna save 500 here, 100 here, maybe 300 there. Within six weeks, you can have $2,500. These things are very simple. Another thing that I did is I went out and I bought a weekly planner. And I bought this weekly planner because if you don't see something in your face on a daily basis, it's like out of sight, out of mind. And I said, I need to set up something where I can see it daily and I know this is what I need to do. For one, Monday was a le do the learn podcast, the revamp. Guess what happened? I didn't do it. I got too busy. I was doing things that weren't most important, but I'm here doing it now. And I'm patting myself on the back for that one because I said I was going to do it. I didn't do it yesterday, but I still, I, I got to doing it today. Another thing is, sorry, my eyeballs itchy. Going back to the path of least resistance. When I feel like editing, I will edit. If I don't feel like editing, I'm not going to edit. And the reason why I'm saying that because, not because that I'm lazy, but I heard Mr. B say something and it kind of like resonated with me. He said, if I don't feel like uploading, I'm just not going to upload. It's like, I'm not going to kill myself to upload a video if I don't feel like making a video. If I don't feel like editing, I'm not going to edit. Guess what? YouTube has two functions that you can use if you don't like something. No, actually three. There's the, the speed. You can speed up the video. You can get it to two times the speed so that you can fast track in the video. The other thing is, 
if you double click, it skips over on the part of the video that you're watching. And then the third option, I'll at least do this for you guys. I'll segment my video. So if there's something that you don't like in the video, you can skip on to the next part of this video. So that's what I will be doing going forward. And I'm going to document my whole process of me being a YouTube creator. Right now, as you're watching this video, I got about 1200 subscribers. My next achievement is to get to 2000 subscribers. How long that takes me? Who knows? Will I set a deadline for that? No, because when I set deadlines for myself and I don't achieve them, I set myself up for failure and I say, oh, I get down on myself and then I don't want to do it anymore. So on this Learn podcast, I'm just going to be talking about different things. Self-improvement, ways to make money, financial literacy, understanding of money and how to use it. These are all things I'm going to be talking about. Entrepreneurship, business development. These are things that I like to talk about and I'm going to be sharing with you guys. Also gadgets like these ones here. These JBL, I think they're the 770s. These are an amazing gift that my wife got me. I love these headphones. They're wireless headphones. They also do have a wire if you do want to use it, as you can see here. There's a built-in mic. Absolutely amazing. And the best part is noise cancellation. Whenever I'm just in a mood, my kids are running around. I'm going to make a commercial about this because it's, it's quite funny what I was thinking in my head. But... I'll explain to you guys anyway, so you'll f know exactly what it is I'm, I'm, I'm painting in my head and for you guys to hold me accountable. So this is the commercial. Kids are making a bag of noise behind me and I just can't think. I'm just like, oh, I'm losing my mind. And then I take the headphones and I just go like this. And then I just don't hear anything or I don't know, maybe just like silence like you know but it was just so cool how that came to my head and i'm gonna tag jbl too hopefully they can they become a sponsor to the learn podcast but that's what i'm gonna do just to set my um talk about the things that i like and i know the things that i like there's somebody out there that likes this stuff even if it's one person i did my job so back to these headphones noise cancellation very comfortable i love them the battery life on these bad boys is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yes. So enough about the JBL headphones. But going back to imposter syndrome. <clears throat> so my trusted friend, ChatGPT, I said, I'm dealing with imposter syndrome. How can I turn this downfall into a strength? Whenever you see something negative in your life, think how you can turn that positive into a negative. Sometimes that negative is like, it's something in disguise for you to uncover to really understand your true self. So with me with the imposter syndrome, chat GPT, chat GPT said dealing with imposter syndrome can actually be a strength to your YouTube channel. Focus on self-development and financial literacy. And here's how you can take advantage of it. I'm reading it word for word because I can't put this into my own words. And why not just read it off of the screen, right? Eliminate the friction. Anything you want to do, eliminate the friction. And I'm showing you guys firsthand what it's like to eliminate the friction. So the first thing is, also, uh, just to put it out there, disclaimer, I have dyslexia. So sometimes when I'm reading, it sounds like a grade two level, but that's how I read. And forgive me for sounding like a at the grade two level, the words don't always appear the way they do on the screen. But you know how I get better at reading? Reading aloud, reading frequently. So please forgive me if I sound like a grade two while, I read it, while I'm reading this, but I'm just, I just want to be my authentic self. And that's the best way I can show you guys by not cutting it, or for the most, I'll cut it here and there, like some of my videos. You will see me like upload some videos where I'm just doing some like wacky stuff. But for the most part, when I'm doing a learn podcast, I'm going to try not to edit these videos because I want to just be my authentic self. All right. So going back to what I can do to help with my imposter syndrome. So relatability. <clears throat> it told me to do this because sharing my own experience with imposter syndrome makes me relatable to my audience. Audience. So I hope you guys can appreciate me being my authentic self, being relatable with those that want to start something and you're just struggling to put your best foot forward just start 
who cares how it looks? You know what the funny thing is? Maybe 10 people watch this video. And, and you know what? They may not even comment. But guess what? If I do this on a daily basis, imagine where I will be in 10 years. Could you imagine me like this? talking to somebody about the learn podcast and my come up and blah 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 10 years that's the goal 10 years in 10 years you know how old i'm gonna be guess my age in the comments i'm not gonna tell you but guess how old i'm gonna be in 10 years and funny enough that was the age i said for a very long time that's the age i want to retire at maybe i retire before that who knows but now i gotta start documenting the process of getting to that 10 year mark so this is day one of the 10 year goals. Bill Gates said something that's f funny. Um, Bill Gates quote about one year and 10 years. Bill Gates said, most people overestimate what they can achieve in a year and underestimate what they can achieve in 10 years. And I like that 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 quote because we're always saying yeah yeah i'm gonna do this 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 in one year why are we looking for 10 years 10 years is a big time horizon if i want to be a youtuber that has 2 million subscribers why not give myself 10 years to do that because it's shorter goals i have to achieve in each of those years so if i want to hit 2 million subscribers in 10 years that's 20,000 subscribers a year I have to get. What is that on a monthly level? That's under 2,000 people I have to get to subscribe to my channel. What is that on a weekly basis? About 500 people a week. What is that on a daily basis? Less than 100 people. So do you see how I just broke down that goal into something smaller, something more attainable? I haven't received like a hundred people in a day, but it's something that I can strive towards with doing these podcasts and just being my authentic self. So going back to what chat GPT said about making my negative into a positive. Also remember whatever has the, the negative, there's always a positive to that. Nothing, nothing can exist without having the opposite to it. Next with me doing this, my learning journey. <clears throat> you ever hear, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon? Or fall in love with the journey opposed to the end goal? Because when you hit the end goal, guess what happens? You gotta look for a new goal to start and it's a new journey you gotta start, right? Sorry. So fall in love with the journey. It's gonna be a bumpy road, but hey, that's what life is. Like nothing can just be a straight arrow going up, right? Then it would just be boring. You have to have your ups and downs for it to be fun and exciting. I'm gonna to try to smile more often too. It's hard to smile. Like I know I have that, that boring look on my face, like, but I will try my hardest to smile as much as possible. Throwing that energy out there to you guys. The next thing is, is expert interviews. Whenever I'm struggling with something, why not reach out to an expert and have an interview with them? The Learn Podcast, where first you learn, then you earn. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, please subscribe so that it helps grow my channel and YouTube can push me out to more people. Because at the end of the day, if you don't subscribe or tell people about it, no one's gonna know about it. Next is interact interactive content. So I could do a question and answer session, live streams. Let me know if you guys are interested in me doing live podcasts. It's something that I've been thinking about, but I don't know. So you guys let me know if you're interested in me doing a live podcast. Personal growth stories. So I can share my stories with you guys as I'm going through things. I'm going to be doing a lot of different things on my channel until I find what it is that you guys like that I like, the happy medium for both of us. So that's my mission. Figure out what the happy medium is, deliver it for you guys on a daily, maybe weekly, monthly basis, who knows? But that's the mission that I'm, I'm seeking right now. Next thing is educational content. content. Use your experience to create educational content that breaks down the what imposter syndrome 
what imposter syndrome is and why it happens and practical practical tips to overcome it. Maybe that's what I should do. Just if you're suffering through imposter syndrome, come to my channel. Many different things are going to happen on this channel. But that was one piece that I wanted to just really share with you guys. Another thing that I want to share with you guys. So I'm going to go over my notes. On my what or my weekly planner, it says Dean's notes. So these are the notes I took over the last couple of days and I want to share with you guys. So my notes, I was reading Traffic Secrets by Russell Brunson, amazing guy. Shout out to Russell. For business owners, if you're looking to, to help grow your business or have a tool that is very helpful, I recommend you get um, ClickFunnels. Yes, it is an affiliate link, so they do pay me some commissions for my affiliate link. I left it below for you to try it out. I think they give you 14 or 30 days for free to try it out. Try it out. If you don't like it, cancel it. It's as simple as that, but it's something that I really like to use. So I left my affiliate link below. So in Traffic Secrets, when I was reading it, <clears throat> chapter or the first couple of secrets he mentions is who is your ideal or dream client, customer, avatar, all interchangeable. It all depends on what word you want to use. But who is that dream person you are trying to reach out to? So this is for my business owners. Next question is, where are they hanging out? You need to know where they hang out, what they like to do so that you can service them better. If you don't, under, if you don't know where these people are hanging out, how are you going to service them? For example, you have a new basketball you invented. Where would you find people that play basketball on a basketball court, right? So you want to reach out or you want to go to different basketball courts where people are playing to test out your basketball or um, a YouTube channel like NBA.com or uh, a highlight channel about basketball is probably somewhere that you want to go or even a, a basketball group on Facebook to let people know, hey, I got this new ball. I want you guys to try it out. Let me know what you think, right? So you want to know where these people are hanging out. You want to ask your ideal dream clients or ask yourself, what are the problems that they're having that you know that you can solve? These are some things that you want to do on a daily basis. If something comes to mind, write it down. Don't try to keep it in your head. Your mind or your brain is not to store information. It's to create different things for you to put down on paper. When you need that information, you have it written down somewhere. So I'm just going at high level with this stuff. If it is something that you do want me to talk about, you have to leave a comment below so that I know what information you guys actually like. <clears throat> the next part that he talks about in this book, so I'm just covering the first four chapters, is create a dream 100 list. So what's a dream 100 list? Instead of trying to find where your clients are, find groups or people that they follow, pages that they they read, and you want to be a part of those groups or reach out to those people. Those are your dream 100. Who has access to my ideal audience? So let's take influence for in, influencers, for example. For me, let's say an influencer that has my dream client is EYL, that's Earn Your Leisure. They have my dream client. Those are people that are looking to invest in themselves, start their business, entrepreneurship, all that good stuff. They have my dream client. So I would create a list of different things like that, like Alux, that's somewhere that has my dream client. Myron Golden, Neil Davis, Ray Dalio, Robert Kiyosaki, Grant Cardone, Ash Cash. Um, Caden Booth, Leo's Credit Tips, Wealthy College Kids. These are all people that have my ideal client. So I need to create a list of all these people, places, blogs, newsletters, because this is where the bulk of the people that I'm trying to reach out to exist. Once I do that and have that list curated, I gotta start interacting with these lists. I need people to know I exist. I feel like my paper is getting stuck together. Once they know it, I exist, I just provide them value. You always wanna provide value before asking for anything. 
there's three things you need before anybody buys. They need to know, trust, and like you. If you don't have those three things, it's not going to happen. So know, trust, and like. Once you have those three things, people will start to buy from you, provided that you provide them value. <clears throat> so the other part of that I also learned was creating a hook, story, and offer. So what is a hook? Imagine yourself fishing. When you fish, if you throw the hook out there, no fishes are going to come because it's not attractive to them. You want to stop somebody in their tracks and be like, oh, what is that? So now imagine you're fishing. Oops. You throw the rod out there, but on that hook, you have a worm. I think fishes eat worm. Or you could have a little fish that the fish eat. So you throw it out there. They see the thing. They see the worm where they see the little fish. And the fish says, ooh, food. Bam, they grab it. That's how you want to think of your hook. Something that gets people that's scrolling on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever, me and Bic, oh, what is this? Then they stop to see what this is about. Let's say it's a video. You have three seconds to capture that person's attention. How are you going to get their attention? You tell them a story. The story is maybe something that relates to them. They're like, Oh my goodness, this is like me. Then they click to learn more, subscribe, buy, whatever it may be. Then you present your offer. So you went from hook, story, offer. The hook is to get their attention. The story is to resonate with them. The offer is what you make to them after they resonated with their story, if it fits with them. So those are some of the things that I learned with reading the traffic secrets. And I'm forgetting a lot and I'm being real right now because I read this on Sunday and it was fresh in my head, but I waited too long to get this information in front of the camera. So I'm doing this for two reasons. One for myself, because if I speak about it, it I start to remember it better. And two, to also help you and provide you value. Because if say you never knew about ClickFunnels or you never knew these secrets before, you just learned something by watching this video. So that's the whole purpose of me making this video. So that was the first part of what I learned. Then last night, I learned some real good gems on selling. Um, one was about, well, one was about credit and the other one was about selling. I'm gonna just stick with selling because of just the whole traffic secrets thing. But the guy was like, he got sold without even the, the guy selling him the product. And the way he did that was he created scarcity so scarcity is having a limit on the amount that you're offering. He validate or he asked people only if they're serious. And if they're serious, he asked them again to validate, validate that they're serious about taking up on his offer. Once he had that done, the next part is he said, Hey, let's jump on a call. When he jumped on the call with that individual, he did not sell the guy. Absolutely. One thing his, his closing was so good, I was sold. And I wasn't even on the call. How the conversation went was, it started like, and you guys can do this too. So this is a hack for you guys. Start with asking why the person wants to achieve this goal. Let them do the talking. The more talking they do, the more it is they'll sell themselves on what it is that they really want. And I believe this is true. I wasn't selling somebody something, but... I was trying to provide them advice and they weren't listening to me. So I stayed silent and I noticed something started to happen. I just let them talk. When you let people talk, they will uncover so much about themselves to you and to themselves, most especially. So when I was talking to this person, I just stayed quiet and they just kept going, maybe for at least 10 minutes. They were like at a, a high because I provided them something and they're just like, no, 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 blah, 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 blah. And the more they kept talking, their tone just kept going lower and lower and lower. And they started to change their own mind. Like they started to have a conversation with themselves. Like I was just there to just listen. And when it came down to it, they literally agreed with what I first said. I didn't say nothing after that. I just left it at that. I was just like, wow, there's a lot of power in this. So start by asking your prospect why they want this. 
Now, this is not the correct order. Or, you know what? Then again, I wrote this down. <clears throat> uh, yeah, if they're serious. Also, compliment them. People like compliments. Compliment them when you jump on the call. Thank you for taking this call. I want to express my gratitude for you being here. And I can't wait to thing, blah, blah, blah. And whatever. Like, you know, you understand what I'm trying to get to. But ask them why they're they're here again. The next part is ask them to rate it from one to 10 of achieving this goal. They give you the reason and then ask them why again. Again, this is them selling them on their own self. Once they do that, ask them why the score is not lower. Yo, when the man said this, I was like, holy smacks. Like this guy sold me on this guy's product and I didn't even need this product. I was like, wow, there's some real power in this. So if you guys see me, if you watch this video and you see me doing this to you, it's because I'm practicing, what did I say earlier in the, the this podcast? The law of averages. The more I practice, the better I get. The more no's I hear, the closer I am to getting to the yes. And once they, they say why it's not a lower number versus the higher number, ask them if they want to know about whatever it is that you have to offer. So they say it's a 10. Why is it not a seven? Oh, because this, this, this. Oh, okay, great. So is it okay if I offer you my program, my service, my book? Shameless book. <laughs> um, but yeah, then they say yes. Then ask them questions pertaining to whatever it is that you're offering to them. Let's take weight loss. The person says, oh, I don't eat. I only eat once a day. Well, my program only works with you eating a minimum three times a day. Are you, will you, can you commit to that? At that point, more often than not, they'll say yes. Can you commit to working out at minimum three days a week? Yes. You're literally just setting them up for them to be like, yeah, I want this program. And you know what's funny? The way the man closed it off was just so smooth. The man said, great, where's your credit card? The man said, what? <laughs> he was so lost, he didn't even know what to do. And that was just the power of just the way he set up this, this, this call to close him on the sale. He's like, well, you said you wanted this, you said you wanted that, you told me it was this, you told me it was that. So where's your credit card? Most people say, oh, I'm not ready to sign up. But you just told me all the reasons why you wanted to sign up. Like, you're literally telling them, like, all their object objections are just smashed because the way you just set up that phone call. Or oh, I'm not ready to, but you just told me that this was very important to you. So why wouldn't you be ready to do this? To put the ice, I used to say icing a lot, but icing on the cake. He said, right now, I'm unable to take you on, but I have availability in the coming months. So you can pre-pray now. I'll give you some stuff to do in the meantime, and then we can start in the in the forthcoming months. I was like, holy, this guy is. So at the end of that, that video I was watching, the man said he has more clients than he knows what to do with them. He had to hire help just to close clients. That's how powerful this is. So I encourage you go try this out and let me know how this works out for you. Another thing that you can do as a tactic, you can say, hey, if you pay up front, I'll give you a discount. But Or we can do monthly and then you pay the full price of X, Y, Z. Whichever you get, congratulations. And if it works, comment below and let me know how this worked out for you. I'm I'm curious to know and going and I'm excited to learn how this worked out for you. But I've been on here for quite some time. I'm excited to get back in the groove of things. Thank you for tuning into the Learn Podcast, where first you learn, then you drop the L, and then you learn. Also, you can click above to watch some previous episodes of the Learn Podcast. And if any of those episodes resonated with you, leave a comment in the description or leave a, com leave a comment in the comment section and let me know so that I can make more videos like this.